ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد عباد الله servants of allah worshipers of allah slaves of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ponder over how quickly these days and nights of ramadan have passed us by ponder at how quickly this life will likewise pass us by as we approach nearer and nearer to our destination we approach nearer and nearer to those plains on the day of judgment wherein we will stand naked uncircumcised on that day of terror on that day of hardship on that day of difficulty and it is moments like this these opportunities that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered us that make that standing on that day a standing that will be easier a standing wherein our deeds and our righteous actions that we do in the last 10 days of ramadan and other moments such as this that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us that will aid us on that day yawm al qiyamah so only a small amount of this month remains so seize this opportunity my brothers and sisters and take benefit from this time before the end of the month in these final nights these days and these nights before yawm al eid are treasures and whomsoever does righteous deeds in them then those righteous deeds shall be stored up for them on the day of resurrection when you will need these few days and these few nights that you spent you will need them and the deeds that you performed in them to make your scales on yawm al qiyamah become heavy then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us on that day if we were righteous and pious allah will give us on that day nobility and honor and nearness allah will give us happiness and enter us into the gardens of paradise under which rivers flow to remain there in forever allah will give us houses and palaces whose bricks are made out of gold garments out of silk vessels of gold and silver rivers of honey and water and wine and milk spouses that will be pleasant and beautiful all of this for what my brothers and sisters all of this for those who perform righteous deeds all of that for those who don't waste their time who don't spend these opportunities that allah gives them by wasting them and losing out we want to be amongst the believers yawm al qiyamah we want to be from those who see the face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the believers will not have been given anything better and more beloved to them than to see the to see the face of their lord 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned with respect to the believers that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah it will be said to them Kulu wa shrabu hani'an bima aslaftum fil ayyam al-khaliya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them eat and drink at your pleasure for that which you, use, for that which you have sent forth from the days that have gone past so Allah will give you drink and Allah will give you food and Allah will give you pleasures and to rest in ease and comfort for that which you have done in the days that have gone by meaning in the days of this life and likewise on that day when those who wasted their lives they will say ya laytani lam uta kitabiya wa lam adri ma hisabiya Ya laytaha kanat al-qadiya ma aghna anni maliya halaka anni sultaniya They will say on that day I wish that I had never been given my record of deeds and I had not known my accounting would that this had been my end, my death. My wealth has not availed me. My power and strength has gone from me. This is what they will say on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, those who have not put forth anything. My youth, my sons, my daughters, those who think that this life is just a life of frivolity and fun, you will stand before Allah. Young and old will stand before Allah. If you think that this deen and this religion is a waste of your time and a waste of your energies, that you want fun and frivolity, you want play, and the masjid is not for you, and learning is not for you, and ibadah is not for you, then remember these words, and you will recall them Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on that day when you will say, as these will say, I wish that I had not been given my record this day. On that day, when they will say, the transgressors, those who waste their lives, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati fa yawma idhin la yu'adhibu athabahu ahad wa la yuthiqu wathaqahu ahad Those who will say on that day, Alas, if only I had sent forth good deeds for my life, that's when you'll think about these last 10 days. If only I, have, I had sent forth good deeds for my life. If only I had not wasted those last 10 days of Ramadan, year in, year out. Every single year Allah gave me opportunities in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And throughout the year, every Fajr, Every Dhuhr, every Asr, every Maghrib and every Isha is an opportunity. Every Ramadan is an opportunity. The last 10 days are from the greatest of all opportunities wherein you can take advantage of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you of blessings. Don't be from those, my brothers and sisters, who will say, Alas, if only I had sent forth good deeds for my life. You can send them forth. You can have them recorded in your record. Your record that will come to you in your right hand. Store these good deeds. Don't mock at the believers and don't jest at them. Don't make fun of them. 
Because they will be the ones who will be laughing at the unbelievers Yawm al Qiyamah. Whilst the believers are sitting upon thrones in times of happiness and joy. Then we'll see who will be mocking and who will be laughing. My brothers and sisters, and especially the young ones, take advantage. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alas, if only I'd sent forth good deeds from my life. So on that day, فَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ لَا يُعَذِّبُ عَذَابَهُ أَحَدٌ so on that day, none will punish as Allah will punish. And none will bind the wicked as Allah will bind them. Allah will fetter them. Allah will chain them. Allah will bind them. And Allah will punish on that day like no one punishes. So what do you take as a protection against the punishment of Allah? What will you take? Social media? The selfies? The frivolity and movies? These unbelievers that you follow, that you take as role models and the sinners from amongst the Muslims? Who will you take as your role model? And how will you answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day? On the day when none will punish like Allah punishes. On the day when none will bind and tie you up like the tying and the binding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the transgressors. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as is reported in Bukhari and Muslim that when the last 10 days would enter he would tighten his izar. He would tighten his waist sheet. And he would stay up during the night. And he would wake up his family, his wives, his children, his children in law. Meaning that he would strive harder and he would encourage them to strive harder. So that they may earn the blessings of Allah and the forgiveness of Allah and the mercy of Allah. Even though Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strived throughout the, whole of month, throughout the whole of the month of Ramadan. But the last 10 days he would single out. It's one month a year. That's all it is. It's a few nights of the year. That's all it is. Where you are to exert yourselves. And the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he would increase in the night prayer. He would lengthen his standing. So much so that some nights he would not sleep. Or if he did sleep, he would only sleep a little. So the salaf of this ummah, they would do likewise. Some of the salaf, it is reported from them. That they would strive in their lives with ibadah. They would strive in their lives with the pursuit of knowledge. And seeking the reward of Allah. Such that it was said about one of the salaf. Hamad ibn Salama. That if it was said to Hamad ibn Salama. That you will die tonight. Then he would have nothing more to offer. Meaning that he made so much ibadah and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that with some men you could say to them, you are going to die tonight. And they would have nothing more to do. Because their whole life was filled in servitude and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Devotion to Allah. Love of Allah. Fear of Allah. Hope in Allah. Giving for Allah, taking for Allah, loving for Allah, hating for Allah, feeding the poor, visiting the families, looking after their parents, holding the hand of their mother, 
kissing the forehead of their father. Their whole life was filled with this, with Hajj and Umrah and Qiyamul Layl and the giving in Sadaqah and doing good for others, giving in Zakah, looking after their neighbors. Such that it was said to them, you are going to die. What more can he do? Besides the kalima la ilaha illallah. My brothers and sisters, all of this is to strengthen our connection with Allah and our love for Allah and our fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these last 10 nights, attend the masjid, the masajid of Ahlul Sunnah, the masajid of Ahlul Quran wal Hadith, and they are the masajid of Salafiyyah. Pray with the Ahlul Sunnah. Bring your families. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a unique opportunity. And that is that the time of the night, between the time of the night begins at Maghrib till Fajr, is a short period of time in the summer months. So it is easy to stay up the whole of the night from Maghrib through till Fajr. It is not a great feat. Salatul Isha that is prayed at 10.15. Fajr that is what? 4.30. It is what? Six hours, five hours, maybe less. You come to the masjid and you pray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. As if you had prayed the whole of the night so long as you stuck with the imam till the end. So take heed of these words of admonition first and foremost to myself and my children and my household and thereafter for you and your children and your households. In this month when the devils are chained, meaning that their effect is diminished. And some of the scholars said the heads of the devils they are the ones who are chained. When all of the gates of Jannah are opened and not a single one is closed shut. And all of the gates of hellfire are sh closed shut and not a single one is left open. Come to the mercy of Allah and you'll find him the most merciful. And those of you who have evil then withhold. Withhold from evil. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever all watcher over you. He's a raqib So have muraqaba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. Let's not waste these last ten days by treating them as days of frivolity. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the last ten days that he would make it i'tikaf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the affair of i'tikaf in his book. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Do not, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not have sexual relations whilst you are in a state of i'tikaf in the masajid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the i'tikaf. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would single out the last 10 days of Ramadan with the i'tikaf. And the i'tikaf is to seclude oneself in the masajid, in a mosque, from the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a dhikr 
and prayer and recite the Quran and used to spend the whole of the 10 nights of Ramadan in Itikaf. And after the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, then his wives would spend the last 10 nights of every Ramadan making Itikaf. Itikaf is for men and women. And it is a sunnah of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And once a person enters into, into i'tikaf, seclusion in the masjid for the purpose of ibadah and obedience and dhikr and the recitation of the Qur'an, then a person is not to leave the masjid except for a need, such as to perform wudu or to make ghusl. Or if food is not available to him, then to go and get food so he may break, be able to break his fast and take the suhoor. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be extensive in the salawatun nawafil, in the supererogatory and optional prayers, in i'tikaf, in the masjid. In these last 10 days, leave the dunya, even if you don't make i'tikaf. Leave the dunya for 10 days. Seek Allah for these 10 days. These are 10 days in which the reward is immense. These are 10 days wherein there is Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka inna kunna munzirin fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim that he said subhanahu wa ta'ala that we sent this Quran we sent down this Quran on a blessed night this is laylatul qadr that Allah is referring to here we sent this Quran down on a blessed night, verily we are ever warning. In that night is decreed every affair of ordainment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that he revealed the Quran in this night, showing the excellence of Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 nights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not specify which night it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not inform us specifically which night it is. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, seek it in the last 10 nights. In a narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the narration of Aisha, reported by Bukhari, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, seek out Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10. It is important to seek it out because in it are decreed every affair and matter of ordainment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a whole surah concerning it. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr. Tanazzalu al malaika wa al ruhu fiha bi idhni rabbihim min kulli amr. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, we have sent it down, meaning we have sent the Quran down in the night of decree, the night of power. And what will make you know what the night of decree is? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. That's Laylatul Qadr. Better than a thousand months. A thousand months is 83 years and four months. One night is better than 83 years and four months of any other night. Therein descend the angels and Jibreel. Jibreel is the ruh. Therein descend the angels and Jibreel by Allah's permission with all the decrees. And there is peace, goodness from Allah upon the believers until the appearance of dawn. So the righteous, the righteous deeds performed in this night are better than a lifetime of worship. Imagine if one does this consistently throughout his life. 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 70 years of his life. 70 years. And in each of these 70 years, he gives one night 
that Laylatul Qadr to Allah and Allah gives him in return for those nights, imagine 70 nights, year in, year out for 70 years of your life. Allah gives him 70 lifetimes of worship for just 70 nights. 70 lifetimes of worship for a person who lived for, let's say, 80 or 90 years. A man who lived for 30 or 40 years and he spent the last 10 nights of Ramadan seeking Laylatul Qadr. Allah gives him 20, 30 lifetimes of ibadah. So attend the masjid and spend your Salatul Taraweeh with the Imam. There is no need for a second Tahajjud and a second Jama'ah as many of the people they do. That is not from the practice of the Sahaba or the Salaf. Come and pray with the Imam from the beginning of the prayer till the end of the prayer and earn the reward as is mentioned the hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man qama laylatul qadr that whomsoever stands in the night of decree imanan wa ihtisaban with iman and in anticipation of the reward from Allah ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi then all of his previous sins are forgiven. Stand with the Imam. That is your night done. If you stand with the Imam on the night of decree, all of your sins are forgiven so long as you stood with the Imam as a muwahid, anticipating the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Laylatul Qadr. It is a night of goodness. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us. He said that I was told about Laylatul Qadr and then I was caused to forget. So seek it in the last ten nights. In a narration, seek it in the odd nights of the last ten. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that on the night of Laylatul Qadr, it is calm, it is pleasant, not too hot, not too cold. And the sun rises the following morning like a brass dish, feeble, without any rays. That is Laylatul Qadr. Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, what should we do if we find Laylatul Qadr? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed in a narration collected by Imam Tirmidhi. He said, say, Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the one who pardons greatly and loves to pardon, so pardon me. So fear Allah, my brothers and sisters, and don't waste these last 10 days. End Ramadan upon goodness. For indeed the a'mal as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ that, that, that a person's end result, or that the, what a person concludes his life upon, that is what he'll be judged upon. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a man does the deeds of the people of hellfire, but he'll be from the people of paradise. And a man does the deeds of the people of paradise, but he'll be from the people of hellfire. Because he said the deeds of a person are in accordance to what he died upon. <inaudible> so if you're a person who did the deeds up until this time from the deeds of the people of hellfire, now is the time to change. And do the deeds of the people of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter myself and yourselves into the gardens of paradise. al firdawsul a'la That Allah enters us into that. Showing us his mercy and forgiving us our sins. Barakallahu feekum. Wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk.